As many of you guys know, Apple's Spring Loaded event is happening tomorrow, and last week I published a video early morning on Wednesday claiming that the 24-inch Apple Silicon iMac is coming at the event, and today I'm even more convinced than I was last week. So in this video, I'm gonna go more in-depth than I've ever gone before in terms of predictions for a new product, laying out everything from the design, the specs, price, internals, and more. But first, I wanna mention that when I made the claim that the iMac is coming, most tech blogs and YouTubers were doubting that an iMac would get released until at least WWDC in June. But I doubled down and said that I would shave my goatee if I'm wrong, which of course isn't as big of a deal as John's eyebrows. But lucky for me, throughout the entire week we got more and more convincing rumors pointing to an iMac releasing tomorrow, so let's get into that before I get in depth with the new Apple Silicon iMac. After my 24-inch iMac confirmed video was uploaded and scheduled for the next morning, a Mac Rumors forum member shared an image of the Apple event invite logo, which he flipped over, and as it turns out, it almost perfectly matches the EL within the hello text that was shown in an ad for the original Macintosh. And that same day, Mark Gurman from Bloomberg, who was a very reliable leaker, mentioned it during an interview that the event won't feature anything particularly innovative except the iMac if it does actually come at the event. Now this is a really really huge deal because prior to this interview Mark actually claimed that the redesigned iMac would not be coming until the third quarter of this year and that was actually the only thing that was making me have doubts about the iMac coming at the event but now he totally changed his mind, so that's a relief. And then after that, he posted this on Twitter, basically asking if it would be weird if the iMac came with the M1 chip, pointing to a release long before the powerful M1X chip is ready to launch. And then after that, Love to Dream, also a very reliable leaker, hinted at the colors from the spring-loaded event logo, matching the colors of the original multicolored iMac. And if you didn't already know, John Prosser had some renders created based on leaked info that the new redesigned IMAX would be getting new colors. And Left a Dream basically agreed with him on multiple occasions, especially this most recent one. Soon after all of that, many tech blogs and YouTubers and even leakers started getting hyped up for a potential iMac release at the event, including Luke Miani, Greg's Gadgets, Sam from iUpdate and AppleTrack.com, Talos of Tech, Nikias Molina, and Gio Riku, who is going on record and offering up his eyebrows in case he's wrong. And even Max Weinbach, a fairly reliable leaker as well, and his reasoning was that production started late last year on this iMac. And that perfectly matches up with John Pross's rumor from last month mentioning that the new iMac is ready and could launch at any time. But the only weird thing is that in John's latest video, he said he would lose his mind if the iMac gets released at the event tomorrow. So I wonder why he isn't as confident as others. But beyond that, on Friday, we got a report that the amount of in-stock 21 and a half inch iMacs have been dropping as we're getting closer to this event, which is very common to see before a new model comes out, especially since last month they discontinued the higher storage models, which usually never happens. And just a few days ago, Apple apparently advised retailers to prepare for new products with new randomized serial numbers. And my theory is that every new Apple Silicon iMac with a redesign is gonna have one of these new serial numbers. This would help Apple rid the world of Hackintosh systems that try to use the serial code to make iMessage and FaceTime work properly. So, sorry Hackintoshes. On top of that, Wedbush Securities mentioned that there could be a few surprises at tomorrow's event, including new iMacs with a range of color options. So based on all of that, the evidence for an iMac launch tomorrow is even more clear than it was when I made that video last week. But if I'm wrong, I will be shaving my goatee in the next video I make after this one, so subscribe right now for a chance to see that if I am wrong. Now with all of that said, let's get in depth 
with my predictions for the new Apple Silicon iMac. Most rumors pointed to the iMac either having a 23 or 24 inch display, and I personally think it's gonna be a 24 inch since Apple seems to be recently switching over to even numbers with the rumored 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro models, as well as the recent 32 inch Pro Display XDR. Now, as far as the resolution, I think that Apple is actually gonna go with 4.5K, and here's why. Apple's current Retina iMac displays have kind of weird resolutions because Apple's goal for retina quality is to hit around 218 or 220 pixels per inch, as you can see with the 27 inch 5K iMac, as well as the 32 inch Pro Display XDR, and of course, the 21 and a half inch 4K Retina iMac which actually has a 4.1K resolution, a bit higher, just so it could hit that 218 PPI requirement. But if you take that same 4.1K resolution and change it to a 24 inch display, it goes all the way down to 196 PPI, which is not enough to be considered retina. So I ended up finding the perfect resolution that maintains a perfect 16 by 10 aspect ratio while keeping the PPI just slightly higher than the Retina 218. So I think it's gonna be around 4480 by 2800 resolution. Now there is a chance that it's gonna have a 5K display, but it'll lead to an overkill amount of PPI for a 24 inch display. So I'm sticking with 4.5K. And I wanna mention that it probably is not gonna have mini LED or anything like that. Now, as far as the exterior design, I made a video way back in September predicting what the iMac redesign would look like. And I basically said that it would look similar to a Pro Display XDR with the iPad Pro-like bezels and the completely flat sides and back except that it definitely will not be getting those cheese grater holes, which will then make the sides thinner than the ones on the Pro Display XDR. I also mentioned that the stand will be more square shaped, like the Pro Display stand, compared to the current IMAX wedge shaped design, except that it definitely would not have an adjustable hinge. The one on the new iMac will go into the chassis like the current stand already does. And then a couple of months back, John Prosser showed off renders of the new iMac, and those are basically spot on with what I expect, except that in his renders, you can't really see the vents on the back, since I do think there's gonna be a fan, and I'll get into that in just a second. Now, the only thing that I initially got different compared to what John Prosser showed off is that I expected the iconic iMac chin to stick around, but get shrunk down significantly compared to the current massive chin. And at this point, I'm really not sure about if we should be expecting the chin or not, since most recent leaks and renders point to no chin at all, but I guess we'll have to see. Now, as far as the internal layout, you can see the 2017 21 and a half inch iMac right here, and as you can see, there are huge speaker enclosures on the sides, a bulky hard drive, and a thick fan enclosure in the center, a power supply on the bottom, and the main logic board on the right. Now here is where it gets very interesting with the new Apple Silicon iMac. The large hard drive is going away forever, since we know that the storage will be soldered on to the logic board. The huge power supply on the bottom will be significantly reduced in size since Apple Silicon barely uses any power compared to Intel chips. And then looking at the main logic board, the huge heatsink will be greatly reduced in size and made much thinner. The RAM will now be soldered directly onto the logic board, so it's gonna be much thinner. And there will most likely not be discrete graphics on the 24 inch iMac. So the overall size of the logic board will be reduced as well. So with all of that, we're talking a massive reduction in the overall footprint of the internals. So Apple can flatten everything down to fit in a thin flat back chassis that will likely be slightly larger than the last one to accommodate the larger 24 inch display. And yes, I do think that there's gonna be a fan with vents on the back because as the years go on, the chips will be getting more and more powerful. So they may as well just add the fan and the vents right now instead of having to do it later. As far as the ports, you can expect it to have basically the same ones as the current 21 and a half inch iMac, except with USB 4 ports instead of Thunderbolt 3. 
free. And as far as the price, I have a pretty good feeling that the starting price will be around $1,300, since that's the price of the current Retina 4K 21 and a half inch model. And the new one will for sure have a Retina display at the base price. Now, Apple could end up dropping the price by maybe $100, but I feel like since we're getting a full iMac redesign, people will gladly pay $1,300 for the 24 inch iMac. Now, as far as the chip and the specs, I'm now 100% sure that the base model will get the same M1 chip that we already have. Some people think Apple could go the expensive route and just give the base model the upcoming 12 core M1X chip, but that would make the starting price much higher. And I don't think Apple would do that because Apple usually offers a variety of colors on their lower end products like the iPhone 12 and iPad Air to target a younger aged market. So if that's Apple's goal with all of these new colors, then they would need to keep the base price down, probably no higher than $1,300. And in my opinion, I do not think that the larger iMac coming later this year is gonna have those colors. I think they're gonna keep it very simple and I even think they're gonna call it the iMac Pro. So do not expect colors on the larger iMacs. Now you might think it's crazy for someone to pay $1,300 for an M1 iMac when you can just get an M1 Mac mini for 700. But keep in mind that you're getting a retina quality 24 inch display and the magic mouse and magic keyboard included with the iMac. So it's actually still a pretty good value, especially with the new design. And I'll even go as far as to say that there's a good chance the mouse and the keyboard will match the body color of the iMac since that's what they did with the iMac G3. Now, as far as the specs, I expect everything to be almost identical to the M1 Mac mini. 256 gigs of SSD storage and eight gigs of unified RAM at the base price with most likely the same upgrade options. But the one thing I do expect to get upgraded is the webcam. So it'll probably pack 1080p resolution, which many people have been asking for. So there you guys go. I think that's just about everything. And less than 24 hours from right now, we'll know exactly what I got wrong and what I got right if there even is an iMac announcement in the first place. But if there isn't, and we have to wait until later this year, you can almost certainly expect the new iMac to at least have the M1X chip as an upgrade option, no doubt about it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, click that circle above to subscribe right now so you can watch me shave my goatee just in case that I'm wrong. And definitely check out one of those two videos right there, and I'll see you tomorrow.